Welcome back. This is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. Go ahead and share the page and share this video with family and friends because today is an important topic about hypoglycemia. There are a lot of people who have low blood sugar symptoms that are not clinically managed. And these are the people who are maybe thin, uh, more women than men, and these are the people, if they don't eat, they get shaky, irritable, um, they get uh, angry, or they feel lightheaded, they have no energy, right? So it's very important for these patients because in the traditional medical model, there is no solution for patients who have hypoglycemia. They have solutions for hyperglycemia, like diabetes or insulin resistance, right? Where they give them uh, metformin or insulin and, and those types of things. But in terms of low blood sugar, there are a lot of symptoms associated with it, yet there is no conventional medicine uh, solutions. So today we're going to talk about the two rules to stabilize hypoglycemia. Two rules to manage low blood sugar, right? What is our clinical goal? What do we need to do? Okay, so rule number one, we need the patient must eat frequently enough to prevent drops in blood sugar. What that means is they have to have small meals every one to two hours to manage blood sugar. We do not want this high fluctuation in sugar or a big drop in blood sugar. So they have to eat frequently enough where their sugar is pretty well maintained and they don't have this big drop. And the reason is when you have big drops in blood sugar, what happens is cortisol or sympathetic response in our body kicks in. And what that happens, you have um, an overload of cortisol, more stress hormones, and your body is actually being uh, stressed. So we don't want that. So we want to make sure that there is no drop in blood sugar uh, in between meals. And the way to prevent that is to have them eat small, frequent meals, less sugary stuff actually have protein and vegetables and fats, right? Rule number two, the patient must have enough glycogen stores or a ketogenic adaptation to supply the body and the brain with fuel throughout sleep. What that means is, if you wake up in the middle of the night, one or two a.m., right, and you can't go back to sleep, right? you all of a sudden get up, your heart is kind of racy, um, you go to the bathroom, you come back and you're up for one, two hours before you can actually fall back asleep. Some people will actually go down and eat something so they can actually go back to sleep. These are the patients who have uh, low glycogen sto stores or they're not keto adaptive, meaning they can't produce enough sugar to make or stabilize it throughout the night. They have this big drop in blood sugar. What happens is cortisol goes up and cortisol wakes you up out of a deep sleep. And then you can't go back to sleep because levels of cortisol is too high. So rule number two, you have to be able to sleep through the night, right? Or if you get up in the middle of the night, you have to be able to go back to sleep, right? You go to the bathroom, you come back, you go back to sleep. If you're staying up one to two hours, right? In the middle of the night, it is highly likely you have a blood sugar dysregulation, okay? So low blood sugar can keep you up in the middle of the night. And I find that it's one of the big causes of insomnia in women is their low blood sugar issues, right? They keep waking them up in the middle of the night. So this needs to be managed. So the two rules need to be managed. Patients must eat frequently enough to prevent drops in blood sugar. The patient must have enough glycogen stores or be keto adaptive to be able to sleep through the night, right? And what is the clinical goal for that? What are we trying to do? The outcome. Clinical outcome. Patient does not feel energized after meals. So oftentimes when we have people have hypoglycemia and they get shaky, irritable, and they eat a chocolate bar, they feel like they have to eat something, they eat it, and maybe 10, 15 minutes later, they're like, oh, I feel so much better. My energy is better, right? That should not be happening. For normal physiology, you eat your meal, 
and your energy should not change. It should just kind of be even, right? So if you feel energized after a meal, it's likely that you have hypoglycemia and we want to prevent that. What we want is you eat a meal, you feel full, you feel happy, but you don't feel more energy or less energy or those types of things. It should be pretty even. So our clinical go uh, go uh, goal is the patient should not feel any change after the meal. They just feel satisfied from eating a good meal. Number two, resolve hypoglycemic symptoms. So how do we know when a patient is getting better, right? One, you can do tests and so forth, but clinically speaking and symptomatology wise, the patient should not be irritable, shaky, lightheaded, lack focus, right? Or feel like they're gonna pass out between meals or if they skip a meal, they should not feel that way. So the clinical goal is to stabilize blood sugar so the symptoms between meals or if they skip a meal goes away. All those symptoms about irritability, anger, or that uh, classic commercial of being hangry, uh, hungry and angry, right? Uh, the Snickers commercial. So you have to resolve the hypoglycemic symptoms. Number three, patient can sleep through the night. And this is very important in multiple ways, right? You have to be able to sleep through the night. So if you get up in the middle of the night and you stay up one to two hours, it's a big problem, right? One, it's waking you up and you're not getting enough sleep, but it also can be inflammatory when you have these big spikes in cortisol throughout or, or at in, inappropriate times, right? So the patient must sleep through the night or if they do wake up and go to the restroom or whatever it is, they need to be able to fall back asleep. So in our office, we try to do these things, right? We need to be able to get the patient to eat more frequently so they don't have drops in blood sugar, maybe try to get their uh, bodies more keto adaptive. And then we want them not to have any change in energy. We want to resolve any symptoms related to hypoglycemia. And then they must be able to sleep restfully through the night. Because if you do not sleep, what happens is this perpetuates or um, causes more problems with low blood sugar, right? If you get up and you stayed up two hours in the middle of the night and you get up, you're tired, right? You're tired, you need more glucose. And then you feed yourself with a big cup of coffee and a muffin, you feel a little bit better. And then an hour or two later, you feel shaky or irritable, right? Um, it's a big problem, it's a vicious cycle. So you have to break this cycle by managing blood sugar. The clinical goals and outcomes need to be managed. So in our office, we take patients and we take them from our um, step one process of changing dietary um, intake and then trying to manage blood sugar. Therefore, other symptoms will go away. What patients don't realize is that low blood sugar is a culprit for a lot of different things, right? Headaches, uh, body aches, um, insomnia, um, sympathetic response because of high cortisol where you feel uh, just kind of anxious all the time. Anxiety is a big um, factor in society and low blood sugar will drive anxiety. So it's very important to manage blood sugar, right? So my name is Dr. Jin Sung where clinical excellence meets excellent results and we'll see you guys next week on the healthy side. Have an awesome day.